We all have heard about Cobra Kai Rights, that karate-focused Netflix program where they take it so seriously that it degenerates into this karate gang war extremely entertaining but also somewhat absurd too. There's no way you'll witness this occurring in real life, or will you? You must keep in mind that we as human beings are capable in showing bizarre behaviors in response to the most absurd activities. Which takes us to our subject for today, Count Dante and the Dojo Wars. Count Dante, real name being John Kehan, was born on the 2nd of February 1939 in Chicago, Illinois and was raised by a wealthy Irish-American family. He was quite the character, being a U.S. Marine and Ranger and often described as a large man with a freshly trimmed beard and big curly hair, wearing elegant clothing, and occasionally, walked around town with a pet lion cub on a leash. In the mid to late 50s, he had started learning martial arts, training under Robert Triads, a former colonel in the U.S. Army CID reserves. Dante trained largely under Trias, but claimed to have trained briefly at Bruce Lee's studio in 1961 or 1962. Dante, a seventh Dan black belt in karate, was believed to be skilled in judo, aikido, and other fighting techniques in addition to the Japanese, Chinese, and Okinawan open hand fighting forms. Eventually, Count Dante became a multiple time national kumi or freestyle fighting champion who had never lost, with the exception of being disqualified from the North American Championships. Dante was hailed as one of the finest karate instructors in the United States by America's premier martial arts magazine Black Belt as early as 1964 while he was working as the head instructor of Trias U.S. Karate Association. But behind a dense fog of rumors, he quickly left his position at the Trias company. Later, the fighter claimed in an interview with Black Belt that Trias' prejudicial bias against his African-American trainees was the reason for the breakup with USKA. He adopted the name Count Juan Rafael Dante in 1967, stating that he had changed his name to conceal the fact that his family had fled Spain during the Civil War. Of course, this was untrue. In the same year, he served as the promoter of the first American full-contact martial arts tournament, earning him the title of the world's toughest fighting master from the World Federation of Fighting Arts Committees. Well, Mr. Keenan, what's karate all about, anyway? Well, karate is an oriental means of self-defense which is now used as a sport. Is it very popular in the United States? Well, it's very popular, especially here in Chicago, which is about the uh, strongest concentration of karate in this country. Next year, he published his own book, World's Deadliest Fighting Secrets, which he would heavily promote in Marvel comic books and have published in martial arts magazines. Dante loomed as a fearsome karate master on the heart-pounding advertisement page. The fighter's sculpted arms slithered menacingly from the shadows while wearing a black martial arts gi. His fingers were coiled in a ferocious combat position that resembled fangs. Sharply arched eyebrows spilled down into empty eyes, while a black beard, sideburns, and a pointed widow's peak rose into the rounded crown of an artificial afro. Dante was billed as the supreme grand master of the Black Dragon Fighting Society and the deadliest man alive, and went on to claim that a single well-placed hit using a secret method he was familiar with, called Dim Mok, could possibly kill a man. While being out of the ring, Dante became obsessed with the more brutal martial arts techniques and created his own variation, called Kata Dante, which prioritized street fighting and rapid-fire assault over the more formal techniques used by other systems. To prove the effectiveness of his fighting system, Dante kept posing challenges to opponents and harboring resentments. According to some YouTube videos, many American dojos began to find Dante's ego annoying. Their main complaint was that Dante was organizing competitions without referees and placing a premium on full contact, Kumite style battles. They reported the issue to the press and publicly criticized Dante for holding these competitions, which they saw as a slight against conventional karate. In response, Dante argued that students, even those with black belts, are doomed to fail in street fights since the dojos were teaching diluted versions of martial arts. Karate is for sisses, he concluded as he wrapped up his statement. When Count Dante and his companion Doug Dwyer were intoxicated, they made the decision to use dynamite caps to shatter the windows of a competing dojo. Their arrest followed, along with a charge of arson. The second event occurred on April 24, 1970, when Count Dante and his Black Dragons attacked one of the dojos owned by the Green Dragon Society, a rival fighting organization in Chicago, and took the name Black Cobra Hall. According to press reports, the Count appeared to be trying to resolve a conflict. They allegedly attacked the Green Dragon pupils while posing as policemen. The dojo descended into a full-scale riot as these students took weapons from the walls that the press claimed were Chinese in origin. According to Count Dante, 
He was ripping the eyeballs out of the heads of opposing professors while battling for his life. Although this never actually occurred, he did lacerate a green dragon's eye instructor. But the fight quickly went from violent to sad when Jim Kinsevic, a member of the Black Dragon, was killed. There are conflicting accounts of what exactly happened to him. One claims that after urging the Black Dragons to flee, he was stabbed with a sword thrust into his left side. He reportedly made it only three steps before passing away in a pool of his own blood. Another report said that Jim had been stabbed and cut with a sword before being impaled through the neck with a spear. Regardless of the details, he tragically succumbed to his wounds immediately. According to rumors, authorities later discovered Count Dante skulking beneath a desk in the dojo's back office. The judge dismissed the case after commenting on the participants' insanity and their shared guilt. The case was brought to court. Dante seemed to be particularly saddened by Jim's passing because the two were good friends and because he was responsible for causing Jim's death by orchestrating the dojo storm. Dante would quit taking on challenges from opponents as the guilt would consume him. Or at least that's what he said, appearing to get even crazier and nastier towards anyone who dared criticize him over the incident. By 1974, film studios were eager to find a new martial arts star to ride the wave of popularity that the genre was having. If that star could be a white American as opposed to an Asian, all the better as far as producers were concerned. This was due to the success of Enter the Dragon and the death of its star Bruce Lee a year earlier. Dante was flown to Hollywood for a movie test, which he utterly failed since he was unable or unwilling to retract his punches, injuring a number of the actors who were performing alongside him. After this, he would later experiment in a number of unusual jobs, including those of a hairdresser, a beauty stylist, a used car salesperson, and an adult bookseller. He was at a downward spiral by this point and wasn't generating enough money from his mail-order death classes. But unfortunately, a week after speaking at a martial arts convention, on May 26, 1975, Count Dante passed away in his sleep at the age of 36 with the cause of death being a bleeding ulcer. However, there are rumors that assert that Dante was suddenly killed for a more sinister reason, such as that he had failed to use his own methods or that someone had dealt him the fatal blow. I believe you now get the gist after reading about Count Dante's past and the dojo conflicts. Most things that happen in Cobra Kai can be compared to many of the events that had already taken place, as well as the acts and general mentality of Count Dante, a man who was raised in a prosperous home. He started practicing martial arts and developed his own style by emphasizing street combat and rapid-fire assault while becoming infatuated with violent techniques, possessing a certain technique that they use that might murder a man begins to stir up strife between rival fighting organizations, mocks their martial arts technique to increase their self-confidence, will go to any lengths to harm both their dojos and their pupils. Hence, no matter how absurd Cobra Kai occasionally seems, let's not believe that everything that occurs in the program can't also occur in real life. Count Dante just confirmed it for us.